Here we have the record mechanism out of the satellite. This is considered an uh, ES. Uh, let me take a look here. Yep. This is considered an ES3 or Electrical System 3. Uh, there's actually a note on there that says use carriage for ES3 technique only. They use this in a couple different machines, but. Um, just some of the basic parts here. This is the uh, record cartridge. We got one needle with uh, a record designed to go in this direction. Then we got another needle on this side that's designed to play in this direction. And so when it loads the record, depending on which direction, this whole thing will shift one way or the other to play each side of the record. This is your drive motor. And this is the motor that spins the turntable. That's its, that's its only function. This guy loads the record, and it also causes the carriage to move side to side. And we've got some various gears and stuff, and there's one solenoid in here, so it's it can uh, the mechanism can sometimes jam up when you're futzing with stuff. So it makes it a little interesting, to say the least. This is the uh, sweeper assembly that uh, brushes the any dirt or crud off the needle after it's done playing. Then we've got an adjustment here for tension on the needle. This is the clamp assembly that will clamp the record. And this is a arm that lifts the record. And this thing is just really gummed up all as well. So we're going to have our work cut out for us on this sucker. On this side you can see the rollers there. It grabs the track. And these are the two devices that keep it on the track. This is the item right here that propels it along the track. We've got various uh, worm gears and stuff in here. And this is the switch that tells it what position it's in. This unit will go all the way over to one side and it will stop and then it knows where it is and then it counts pulses as it moves along the track so it can keep, keep its position all the time. And uh... The problem, initial problem I was having with this is this is the pivot for the motor here. And we've got an arm on here. And so basically, to do my initial fix, I need to take this apart, clean out all the old lubricant from this area and re-lubricate it. And then I also need to pull out this motor and lubricate that as well. I just happen to have another motor from another unit that I have. This is this is the motor here. Let's see if we can focus that a little better. There we go. So it's a really neat design. Um, the gear that's on there is uh, held in with a little roll pin. Let's see, get it in focus. So what's really cool is the outside of the motor spins, and the inside here is stationary. It's mounted stationary, so the bearing is all the way through. So what I'll do is I'll pull the other one out and pull this apart and then we'll get something in there, a pipe cleaner or something, and clean it out and then put some fresh lubricant in. I like to use 3-in-1 um, electric motor oil. It has no paraffin in it. There's other lubricants you can use and we won't get into a big discussion on that. But uh, I could also just swap out this motor, but then I'd have to be soldered in and I like to keep things original if they're working. get this motor out it's pretty straightforward we'll change our focus again we've got three screws here we'll pull those out and let's see I don't think we'll have any trouble with our cables I think we've got enough cable slack I might have to pull this out this arm just in case all right now that we got a suitable screwdriver we'll pull out the screws here Try not to break anything. Okay, they do have a washer on them, so we'll try to keep that in check. And I, I could just lubricate this motor, and it would be fine for a while. But I'm doing the long-term repair. 
If this thing, for whatever reason, sits for a few years, I want it to work. And not have to worry about blowing something up or blowing a fuse or something because the um, because the motors won't turn and draw too much current. Okay. It's pretty straightforward there. So since I've lubricated, I did lubricate this just for testing purposes. And uh, yeah, it's working really good now. But it's still got that old old lubricant still in there. So this is just like a slot in here, a, cir a circle with a slot. This is a really teeny tiny roll pin. And I've got a box of these cheapy screwdrivers. And what's great about it is there were some bits in there that are really tiny. So I was able to modify one to make it into a little bit of a punch. Because I don't have a thin enough punch. And this might be a little too thick, but it looks like it'll work. But another thing, when you're doing something small like this, this is where these little tiny hammers work this is a seven ounce hammer and it's perfect for this See, people joke and it looks like a toy but it works really good so we'll get this out of here and uh take a look at things It is coming out great. You can see a little bit of it right there coming out. I'm going to be careful. It just went out all the way. or I don't want it to pull out all the way. So I, I don't want the pin to go flying. So we'll just hopefully... Oh, there it goes. So that's okay. Just a really t teeny tiny rope in there. That's nuts. All right, well, hopefully just give this a little twist. Pops right off. And wiggle this up. Hopefully there's no burrs on there. Oh, I see what we got going. All right, cool. On the end here, we'll see if we can get the camera closer, but what we have is a circlip on here. That keeps the motor snug. So let's uh, let's see if we can move the camera and take a look at that. Here is the circlip here. You can just barely see it in there. So I'm going to use one of these other tiny screwdrivers to see if I can get that out of there because that is a really tight fit. Because the circlip is kind of recessed in here. So without damaging it, that's going to be tricky. Let me get some little pliers. Okay, these are my Zircon mini pliers. I love these things. I've got like five of them, and I'm, I'm going to buy more and get rid of the old ones. See if we can hopefully get this in there. We're going to get the camera out of the way, and I'm going to work on this. Okay, as soon as I shut the camera off, I figured out the method of operation here. Well, so what I did is I stuck this in, I pulled it open oh, wide enough, and then I pushed on the motor shaft, and that worked. Because the motor shaft is about halfway out now. See, if I push this in, you can see the ring that's on there. Actually, we'll use this opportunity to carefully slide it off and make sure it doesn't go flying. That would really suck. Okay, that is off. There's also going to be a washer under there, which I need to be careful. Let's see if we can grab that guy out of there. Our shims. There might be something else, too. Yes, here we go. All right. And there we go. Okay, another thing to watch out for is on the back side of the motor, there is also a washer. 
and that is on this instance stuck to the end there and you don't want to lose any of these washers so that goes on the tail end so we'll put it over here so next thing we got to do is get a pipe cleaner or something and clean this out really good and make sure that there's no old lubrication in it this is the lubricant I'm going to be using this is three in one but it is motor oil engineered for a quarter horsepower motor or large now this isn't quarter horsepower but this stuff is what is recommended um, for like jukeboxes and whatnot but like I said you can use whatever you want I'm not gonna get mad at you or complain you can use anything um, you can use synthetic whatever it's not gonna damage your machine just as long as it gets lubricant uh, another thing I do here's a tip I bought this at the farm store this is actually a large diameter syringe for you know cattle or something like that and I took my Dremel and I cut off the tip so I've got a real fine needler I just stick this in the bottle suck up some oil and do my lubricating with that if you're really clever this is one of them spray nozzles from a you know spray can or something I got a little piece of hose in there and this slips on and now I've got a super duper long oiler works really good got the bushings cleaned out I took a look inside here and it's not a bearing all the way through it's bearing on each end and then they have some sort of sponge material on the inside I can't clean that all that great I did the best I could and I put some extra lubricant inside there so hopefully that'll help out so I put the washer that was stuck on the end there on back on the end of the motor and I've already put this on here a few times uh, must be a little burr on the end but that's okay because when it's fully seated it spins really nice just and this has got a lot of heft to it too so you give her a good spin she stays spinning for quite a while so this will work really good so we just dab a little bit of extra lubricant on there put the nylon washer on or Bakelite or whatever well, that's not Bakelite I don't know whatever it's made out of push that in there and we'll put a little more lubricant in there then we'll we got two shims here put that down on top of there carefully push it down into position and now to carefully fit this thing on here I'll just use my fingers no <laughs> I really don't want it to go flying oh that worked perfect all right so we get a little better focus on that it's so hard to focus on this uh, small area I'll just use the exacto knife to Press it down, hopefully get it into position all the way. Looks good. Alright, it is in. Hopefully this motor will be good to go for many years. I believe I did the same thing on this motor, and I haven't lubricated this motor at all, and it still spins really nice. Alright, so I gotta put this piece back on and press in that little tiny roll pin. Okay, this is the other part of the shaft that the motor actually turns. This is turning freely, but since this has got a bearing in there, we've got like a little bearing block here. It's got two screws right there. I'm gonna remove those and clean it up. Okay, I've got the assembly out and it spins freely I put a little bit of oil on here I cleaned up the the worm gear and this is kind of interesting this is a little slip clutch so when it gets a little bit too much torque it just slips which is thus the name but uh, it's pretty cool in action here we just click it and sometimes you hear that when the mechanism grows and stops you hear it go click 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 and that's normal so this guy is ready to go back in it's all cleaned up and I checked the worm gear in here the other portion of it uh, the the gear that encages it 
and get a little better focus on here for you. Get some more light in there. This guy right here. And it, it is nice and smooth. So I'm not going to worry about that. Because that, that was not binding. So I'm happy with that. Looks like my binding was just in the motor. So we're going to put this together. And we will look at this other piece right here next. Coming up next for episode three, we fix the sticky pivot pin. Click the card in the corner or wait to the end screen and I'll have a card there as well.